Hey guys, this is René. Welcome back to another video on this channel. And today I will talk about the ICT Silver Bullet strategy. So you requested ICT a lot in the comments. And I don't know it's a topic that is really, um, it's discussed wild uh, and widely in the, in the internet. And uh, I was no longer able to reject um, these videos. So I tried to build an expert advisor, so an automated trading strategy that trades this silver bullet strategy. And the results were actually quite surprising. So make sure to watch the video until the end to really understand what this strategy is about. And um, yeah, if you can use it for your own trading. So what is this strategy? So I will explain you the strategy in the way that I implemented it in my program here in a second. But first of all, I want to show you the um, base that I took for this video and for my program. So you probably know the Inner Circle Trader, the YouTube channel, and he explains a lot about his philosophy about trading, which is not always following 100% strict rules. There's always a lot of room for interpretation. What makes it really hard to uh, wrap these strategies in a uh, automated trading program. But I took this video, the 2023 ICT mentorship, ICT silver bullet uh, time-based trading model to build um, the strategy. So I watched this video and also, which is Possibly even more important, I watched this ICT Silver Bullet strategy video from the moving average because he was able in his video to break down the strategy, to really simplify it and um, yeah, give me a good basis for my program. So this one here, uh, I can link it in the description if I do not, do not forget it. Otherwise, just look it up. This is the important base for my program that I now created. But let's talk about the silver bullet strategy as I implemented it in this automated trading program. So you can see I'm using this strategy here already and it is now running on historical data in the Euro US dollar. So the most important thing about the ICT silver bullet strategy is that it is a time-based strategy. So um, ICT is always talking about, or when he is talking about times and everything, he's using the um, UTC or GMT minus four time. So I had to adapt this, of course, because here I'm trading on IC markets data and IC markets is using GMT or UCT plus two. So there's a six hour difference. And this is super, super important because ICT talks about a time range from three to four o'clock. But for us, or for me in this case, trading on the IC market server, it's not three to four, but instead I have to add the six hours. So it's nine to 10 o'clock. So this is, for example, a trading day here. This is running in the tester right now. And here you can see, I'm always trying to trade between nine and 10 o'clock. So maybe we can have another example on the next day and we can see uh, and I, I can explain you what this strategy does. So here is no trade triggered. And what's happening is um, when we reach this time, uh, time gap from nine to 10 o'clock in uh, the London session here, we then search for the last fair value gap and a fair value gap by ICT is defined like this. So you can see here, this is the fair value gap in this candle here. And it is a fair value gap because the previous candle high, like the highest part of the, of the wick here, and the following candle low, the lowest part of the lower wick, there's a gap between these two. So this is the fair value gap. And this is automatically marked and identified by the program that I wrote. So you can see this is the gray box pretty much, which is taken all the way to 10 o'clock because now we will try to enter a trade and we will only enter a trade and only if in the time between uh, nine o'clock and 10 o'clock, again, GMT plus two time, so ICT would be talking about three to four o'clock. That's really important to understand. So in this time range here, we are searching for entries. So if there would be, uh, or if the price would come down into this range here, 
we would then enter the trade um, in a long direction. So this would be a buy signal for us. Um, also, ICT talks about a bigger picture. So normally you should identify the previous trend, uh, trend and figure out specific chart formations. But this whole part is not really following strict rules. So that's a lot of um, guessing and interpretation and stuff, which is not really suitable for automated trading programs. So I kind of skip the whole part and I will just or I just designed this program to pretty much trade every signal without further uh, analysis. Because again, this part is not a uh, following a objective rule set, so you cannot really program it. So, okay, so in this specific case, we did not see the retracement. Um, so once the 10 o'clock uh, time is passed, this trading day is over and there was just no signal. So there is another trading day, whoops, alarm. And here we saw that, um, wait, let me check this. So we saw this uh, fair value gap here. You can see this was uh, detected by the program. And then we saw um, it should not, this should not uh, have closed the fair value gap because I designed it so we will only trade fair value gaps that are not closed yet. So yeah, it's not really super easy to see, but you can see this candle did not hit the lower end of this fair value gap. So we are still trading this signal. Whenever the program detects that a signal is triggered, it will give us the information about the TP and the stop loss. And in this case, I designed the um, stop loss. So it would take the candle where the fair value gap is identified and it would take a maximum of five candles back and it will take for a long setup the lowest point of these five candles. So this is the stop loss. ICT in his videos talks about the last swing low in this case but again a swing low is always it leaves a lot of room for interpretation. I mean is this the last swing low? Is it this one or is it maybe even another swing low. So this is why I took the last five bars and usually we have some kind of low in the last five bars. I can show you some more examples but yeah this is my um, my idea to, to use or to calculate the stop loss. The TP definition is a little bit clearer so we will have the TP um, at the last swing high. So we will take the candle where we figured out where the fair value gap is and from this point on until the um, trigger for this candle we will have a specific amount of bar and the highest point will be the take profit. So this would be the take profit here. So you can see TP and uh, stop loss are now identified. The question is why was this trade not entered or executed and there's another rule. This is what I uh, found in the video of the moving average, which again I showed before, so look it up if you're interested. We need at least 150 points for the TP and as we can see here, the, this was only like 110 points. So TP is too close to the entry, so we do not take the trade, as easy as this. So you can see not every day is a, a trading day, but if I fast forward to the next day, maybe we will see a signal here. So again, you can see nine o'clock um, GMT plus two time, we will uh, identify the last fair value gap. We will get a one hour window where we could trade. And in the 15 minute time frame that I'm using here, this is a maximum of four bars. Again, it was not triggered. It was just triggered after 10 o'clock, so no trade. And this is um, yeah, how you execute, execute a strategy. You really just try to set a rule set and then you follow this rule set. Again, next day, no trade, no trade. And there was a trade. Whoops, this was a little bit too fast. And you can see um, this was nine o'clock. Wait, let me try to get this a little bit clearer on the screen. So you can see nine o'clock. Wait, I can make it like this. So we can see it even better. Nine o'clock, um, there was the last fair value gap. We triggered the trade because the price came back. 
the stop loss is identified at the last swing low, which would be here. So you can see the red box is the stop loss box. And then the TP is at the swing high, which would be this level. And in this case, it should be at least 150 points. Yes, this is about 155 points. So we take the trade, stop loss was here, TP was here, and this was a profit. And um, for this EA or for this um, automated strategy right now, <clears throat> I'm using the following inputs. So we are always risking 0.5% for every single trade. The minimum TP points uh, or distance is 150 points. As I explained it before, I'm using the 50 minutes time frame, and I'm using, um, yeah, also for the fair value gap, I um, made a minimum size for this fair value gap. So it has to be at least five points, which is not really big and then the time for the start um, of the trading set uh, or for this trading window is nine o'clock and the end is ten o'clock so these are the settings i'm using and yeah we can have a look at one or two more trades and then we can do a long-term back test to see if this strategy would have been actually profitable in the last years so you can see there were some more signals um, both not traded and if we have a look at um, the tp this was only 50 points this was about 120 points so just not enough so we do not trade and um, this TP um, 150 points criterion is actually really important because it changes the outcome of the test a lot I did some tests before and um, yeah without this uh, condition with the 150 points for the TP um, yeah, it's really way worse to trade this strategy. But I think um, by now you should have under uh, you should you should understand how this strategy works. And um, yeah, maybe it's time for a long term back test. Um, I'm just waiting maybe to show you one more actual trade, so um, you can see what's going on. Uh, no, no trade. So yeah, you can see most of these days are no trading days, at least not in the London session with Euro US dollar. There we had another trade. And yeah, if we just have a closer look, you can see this trade is currently active. And let me explain you this trade. It will be the last trade that I will discuss here before we do the back test. So you can see here, um, this was uh, nine o'clock. So last fair value gap was here. It was identified by the program. Then the price came back at 9.15, uh, 9 sorry. Short trade was executed, stop loss at the last swing high, or yeah, like at the highest of the last five bars, which is usually the, the swing high. And then the TP is down here at this swing low. So if we fast forward, we can see this trade was not a winning trade, but yeah, that's how it is. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. So important is what the outcome of um, this is over multiple trades or over a lot of trades. So if we now go ahead and maybe test a period starting in 2020 up to 2023, we can see how this develops and how a long-term backtest with the ICT silver bullet strategy would have turned out or if you would have traded this in a live trading account. So this is a really, really important test to yeah, figure out if this strategy actually has value or if it is just, yeah, not really interesting. But let's wait until this is loaded. So you can see now I'm starting in 2020. So I will be testing nearly four years. And yeah, if I speed this up, you can see the program is now going through every single day and it is finding the fair value gaps and it is yeah, identifying the trading opportunities and it's taking the trades if the TP and um, yeah, stop loss um, are good enough to take this trade by the rule set that I tried to define before. So you can see it's taking every single trade and we can also now have a look at the graph to figure out how this would have turned out. So this is the performance for around the first year, 2020 would have been actually profitable. Then let's go on and yeah, let's see some more trades. Also, we can of course have a look at the history here. So we should see that, um, yeah, we are trading with 0.5% um, risk. So we are losing around 50, could be a little bit more because of slippage and costs and stuff, but usually it should be around 50. 
And um, yeah, then of course the profits are usually higher, not always, but on average they should be a little bit higher. And here you can see, um, yeah, this is the performance of the strategy if you would have traded it from 2020 on in euro dollar in the M15 time frame chart. So I was quite surprised when I saw the results because as we will see here, it is actually profitable in the last three to four years. So this is really something that I did not expect. I mean, it's not always winning. So you have also longer sideways periods or negative periods. But if we have a look at the total outcome here, you can see um, tested with 100% tick data here which is coming from Duke's copy. You can see the net profit was profitable. The profit factor was actually really good. So 1.26, in my opinion, is a really good profit factor. And yeah, you can see, of course, the entries by hour are always between nine and 10 o'clock. This is what the strategy is about. So again, nine to 10 o'clock GMT plus two. So for the GMT minus four time, it would be three to four o'clock. This is really important to keep in mind. Then, um, yeah, the rest of the statistics. Yeah, of course, I mean, it's, of course, the profitability is the, the highest uh, at around the entry. And um, then, yeah, I think the rest is not really interesting. So there's one more thing that I want to do and that I already did before, I want to turn off the visual mode and test a even longer period. So let's start testing in 2015 now. So now we're testing eight, nearly nine years. And we will see if this is still profitable in um, the last eight to nine years. And you can see this is not a strategy that trades too much, at least not in Euro US dollar with the conditions that I made up before. So we only had 111 trades from 2020 on. But if I now start another backtest starting in 2015, we will see how this would have turned out if we traded the ICT Silver Bullet strategy in Euro Dollar starting in 2015. So let's have a look here. And we will not see it in the visual mode because I turned off the visual mode. But we will see the performance here as soon as the test is loaded. And I will fast forward the video and give you a quick summary in a few seconds. Okay, so th there we are. So you can see the test is now finished. And uh, let me get you the information like starting in 2015 up to um, around this level here. This was the period that I did not test before. So you can see also from 2015 to 2020, it was profitable. It's not like Again, it's not like it's winning every day, every week or every month, but overall, like with the program that I use here to test this, and this is with 100% tick data in Euro US dollar, it would have been profitable in the last few years. So if you would have applied this rule set um, for your trading, would have it would have been a profitable outcome most likely. I mean, results can vary from broker to broker or from your quality of your order execution, but um, still it's a profitable strategy the way that I implemented here, it here. And um, yeah, that's my mm, first attempt to program a, a ICT strategy. I hope you like this video and this summary here. We can also have a look at the backtesting results. We can see in this longer period, the profit factor was coming down a little bit, but 1.6 at uh, 1.16 is still quite good. Also, keep in mind that I, of course, was not able to um, add this, um, the analysis part of everything. So I, I know that ICT, I don't know all of his videos, but I know that he is talking about analysis and you, you should predict where the price goes next and stuff. And this is something that I didn't really... Um, put into the program because it's just not really possible. And yeah, with just a 100% objective rule set, as I implemented it here, this is the outcome that I got. So let, let me know in the comments what you think. 
Um, did you trade this strategy before and should I maybe make more adjustments to this program? I'm really curious to hear your opinion on this and I hope that you like this little overview. So thanks for watching. Okay, wait, wait, wait. At this point, I was thinking the video was over and I was happy with the results. It was actually really profitable. And then I realized that I messed up big time because I kind of failed to take into account the daylight saving time. So um, as we can see here, um, New York is actually GMT minus five and not GMT minus four. GMT minus four is only during daylight saving time. The problem is that my previous calculation was not really correct. So now GMT minus four to IC markets, which is um, GMT plus two um, normally, and in the daylight saving period is GMT plus three. But this means that there are not six, but seven hours between uh, the time in, in the New York and uh, or in New York and the time that the IC market server uses. So I do not have to add six hours, but instead I have to add seven hours, which leads to the starting time at 10 o'clock and the ending time for trading at 11 o'clock. And with these times, the backtest is actually quite bad. So with the actual times that ICT recommends for the London session, Euro US dollar is not profitable. One hour earlier would have been quite great, but the recommended times are not that good. So mm, yeah, this had me thinking quite a while if I messed something up or, or, or something, but, but I think like this, it should be correct. And I have to add the seven hours to the um, yeah, recommended time um, that is um, told by ICT. So with these times, it looks like the strategy is actually not really profitable for Euro dollar. But on the other hand, it does not really matter what ICT says, I think. So um, if you just change it to, um, or if you are using a European broker, which has um, GMT plus two or GMT plus three during daylight saving time, you can use um, in Euro US dollar, you can use the times from nine to 10 o'clock and it should be quite good. And 11 um, or 10 to 11, is what I show you right now, it's not that good. So yeah, now finally the video is over. Maybe you can do your own testing on your PC and let me know what you think about this. Should I use this program to test some more uh, markets maybe? I think ICT is using a lot of uh, S&P 500 futures. So maybe we, we could go with the US 500 CFD to also test the strategy here. So, yeah, that's it, I guess. Thanks for watching. Have a great time and good trades. Bye-bye.